And today I wanted to talk to you about our concerns with, about Area 8B uh, being designated as urban reserves. It's 440 acres of foundation farmland on the north side of Highway 26. Um, designating Area 8B as urban reserves ignores existing edges. The uh, protrusion of urban use uh, into the large block of foundation farmland will affect all of the surrounding farmland, as Matt talked about on just this example with the tiling. And it doesn't protect the land most under threat of urbanization. We have several good edges in that area. Highway 26 is one, and Weibel Creek and its floodplains is another. But Metro's decision ignores both of those. Sherry, for the yes. record, could you give your name? Sorry, Sherry Amabisa. Um, regarding Area 8B, the state agencies from Metro's DOO recommended, they understood the hard edges of the region, that in the region, they did a lot of study, um, the ODA did as well, looking at what, what edges and boundaries and buffers would be good to protect foundation farmland. Uh, the state agencies in Metro recommended um, permanent major visible separators. They were looking for true dividers, freeways, creeks, floodplains. Um, we happen to have Highway 26 that was used by Clackamas County as a, a good um, edge. And this is, uh, also runs right south along Area 8B as well. The nine state agencies recommended that the area north of Highway 26, uh, which is the area we're talking about, AB, should be designated rural reserves to form a hard edge to protect that foundation or important agricultural region that surrounds it to the north and the west. Metro COO also recommended protecting the large areas of foundation ag land including the land north of Highway 26. And using edges or boundaries such as Highway 26 to provide a long-term hard edge to urban and rural land. The Metro decision ignores all of these recommendations, jumps over Highway 26, and puts an urban protrusion into foundation ag land, a large block of foundation farmland. Clackamas County even recognized Highway 26 as an existing buffer or boundary. Um, they recognized the value of 20, Highway 26 as a hard edge. They placed their rural reserves on the north side of Highway 26, and they kept their urban reserves on the south side. In their findings, they clearly note that Highway 26 was a clear delineator for them. We also have natural resources in Area 8B, but they were ignored by the Metro decision. Lyle Creek and its floodplains are on Metro's Natural Landscape Features inventory map. Natural landscape features, according to the rules, are to be used to limit urban development and define the natural boundaries of urbanization. Lyle Creek and its floodplains does that beautifully. Uh, the floodplains at Wible Creek can be 200 feet wide. It's an excellent buffer between foundation ag lands to the west and the urban lands to the east. The Farm Bureau and the state industries recommend using Wible Creek as a buffer. So you can see here the, um, the floodplains right along in the, in the shaded areas, the floodplains for Wible Creek. And they continue south of the freeway, but these are the 200 wide floodplains that I was showing you in the next picture. So, what are we left with? The metro decision leaves us with Groveland Road as a buffer between the urban reserves on the east and the ad land on the west. Groveland Road is a one-lane gravel road, 17 feet wide, and it is not a buffer. The Farm Bureau will tell you that. ODA will tell you that. Our area farmers will tell you that. We're also left with West Union Road. 
It's 21 feet wide, it's a rural road, and it is also not a buffer. It's supposed to, according to the Metro decision, provide an effective buffer between the urban reserves to the south and the rural reserves to the north. Unfortunately, it has not prevented problems for surrounding farms on the east side of Helvetia Road. Um, south of West Union Road, it has a number of undeveloped fields, fields that are in the hands of speculators that have been um, let grow wild. So the noxious weed seeds travel miles. They contaminate uh, the fields to the north and the west in the Hillish area. The seeds can stay in the land and the soil for 20 years. Cost the farmers extra. We've been getting complaints for the last 10 years or so. They've had to pay extra to, to clean their seeds so that they can um, at least sell them for a decent price, um, but they are contaminated, so they get less than what they would have. And they're spending extra money trying to eradicate the seeds. Some of the seeds um, can travel, as I said, miles and stay in the land for a long time. And so West Junior Road has not been a good buffer between the urban area on the south of it and all the farmland to the north. Um, you also heard about what happens when tiling is disrupted. Tiling crosses uh, parcels. It goes across property lines. So when you do uh, start an urban development in one area, it affects the tiling throughout the whole area. West Junior Road is just not a good buffer. Now, since we talked to you last year, um, some new information has come to light. I'm on the I'm a citizen representative on the interchange area management plan for the Helvetia interchange, and um, the reason for one of the main reasons for designating Area 8B as urban two years ago was because it was to um, accommodate interchange improvements. However, in 2010, ODOT stated that they only need 5.05 acres of Area 8B, not the 88 acres in the lower right corner that was um, so in this corner down here is five acres that ODOT says they need. Um, the decision takes 88 acres all the way up, all the way around to accommodate the interchange improvements. And ODOT is saying, no, they only need enough to do this little clover leaf. Um, the other thing is, is, is having this area as urban reserves will cost taxpayers more to purchase right away when the prices for urban reserves uh, escalate compared to when it's in rural reserves. Um, also, we, earlier this year, we learned that um, ODOT does not need Area 8B to be in urban reserves to accommodate those interchange improvements. Um, they uh, say that they can make the interchange improvements right now, currently, and any proposed interchange improvements without having Area 8B as urban reserves. So the main reason for Area 8B being urban reserves was to accommodate interchange improvements. That is no longer valid, according to, to ODOT. So our goal has been to protect Helvetia's large block of foundation farmland. And we hope that is your goal as well. Um, we think that it makes a good idea, along with ODA, state agencies, and the Metro COO and the Farm Bureau, to use Highway 26 as a hard edge to protect that large block of that farmland. So here you have, you have Highway 26 here, and here's Area 8B. With no buffer along the road, remember 17 foot wide, 21 foot wide, um, we think it's a better idea to reserve all of Area 8B as rural, but an alternative you could consider would be to designate the 5.05 acres that ODOT um, is going to use for the interchange south of Bible Creek as undesignated and leave the rest of the foundation of that land as, as rural reserves. 
You've heard from Ed Sullivan about the legal issues resulting from the Metro decision, specifically the inconsistencies. You've heard about the high concentration of class one soils in area 8B from Gray. You've heard about the extensive capital investment in ag infrastructure, the tiling drainage system in area 8B from Matt Furrow. And you've heard about the lack of buffers that result from the proposed protrusion of urban use into the large block of foundation ag land surrounding 8B for me. We think designating area 8B as urban reserves is a bad idea. We hope you share our concern and take the opportunity to rethink it. Thank you for your time. So, Chair, one, one might yes. one might describe Hillsborough itself as a large protrusion into foundation farmland with on and on both sides of Highway 26. So how would you respond to that? Well, first this of all, this is just an extension of one might say this is just an extension of what Hillsboro has been. And you can you can extend all the way out to the to no, the coast. Not very far <laughs> from the um, first of all there's over there's there's over a thousand acres to the south of um, of Highway twenty six undeveloped ready for industrial expansion inside the urban growth boundary already. There's two and a half million square feet of commercial manufacturing R&D um, space, flex space, available for lease just within Hillsborough. I'm not even talking Washington County, just Hillsborough. Hillsborough has enough land and enough space for 50 or more years based on their last 30 years of usage. The last 30 years of usage for their high tech, they've only used 980 acres. So you can extrapolate that. They don't, first of all, they do not need this. And secondly, they have not done a very good job of managing what they have had. We talked about the, the damage that they've done over in the urban areas with the damaging the tiling and the noxious weed seeds. So they're definitely not, um, the urban factor eight is you have to consider what will harm adjacent surrounding farmland. And this will harm the adjacent farming, farming area. You really need to keep that hard edge of Highway 26 and Elvisha Road to protect this large block that goes to the north and the west. You have thousands of acres. So that would be my response. You can ask Jim Johnson. Thank you. Jim sometimes doesn't like it when I put him on the spot for responsible for all of those questions. So you made the argument I thought it would be good to ask you. Um, if he wants to respond, I'm sure he will. Um, other questions of the uh, said television folks? 